Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe the most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine, and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Oh, please, I don't have your money. Come on, Barrett, you know. Welcome, sir. Please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me, came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness, something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then. I always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Yes, she's a nurse, and quite a good one. What did she do to gain such notoriety? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu, something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. Right then. Show me what you have. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son.
Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. So, you're not exactly a fan? Nuns should be the... I have heard enough for tonight. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me, since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I must confess, some of my rational views have been shaken by recent events. I'll remember to stay away from the district's roughest streets, then. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth? Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's quite honorable of you. Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. If no one stops it, this epidemic could turn into a scourge. It may kill more people than the war itself. Yes, this is another kind of war, but just as deadly. History will judge us all for what we did and what we did not. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are wary of strangers and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him. But it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell.
Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both... What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Peaceful? That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. If some misfortune came upon you... Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. I understand your need for solitude. I don't care. I don't have many friends. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I'll leave you alone, sir. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Hello, young man. 
I'm Dr. Reed, and I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter, please? Sorry, no, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. So my father actually worries about me, then? OK, then. Come on in. I'm Harry, by the way. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? It's locked. It's locked, all right. So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Yes, I know her. She came here to examine me when I was very sick. She said I should go out more. Forgive my bluntness, young man, but you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? This place is awful, I agree. But does that not mean your situation can only improve? That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. How do you feel? I'm 